is the... Whoa. <laughs> Subtle venom. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog, and again, continuing our countdown to Maximum Venom, which airs tonight by the time this episode's going up. That is happening tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time on Disney XD. Make sure you check it out, or I believe you can watch it on the Disney Now app as well if you have that on your phone or on any of your smart devices. I think you can check that out uh, maybe even as early, earlier before the show even airs, I think, too. So definitely check out the Disney Now app and also check out the uh, show if you miss it, you know, if you don't have the app or whatever. You can check the show out tonight on Disney. But if you don't have the Disney XD channel, definitely check out the app. And so that way you can watch it along with everybody else. So uh, yeah, today what we're going to talk about, because in the last episode we talked about season one of the you know the new Spider-Man show, Marvel's Spider-Man. Uh, but then also we talked about Guardians of the Galaxy, a couple episodes from there. So we have that again today. We have some Spider-Man episodes, some Guardian episodes, and an Avengers episode that we'll talk about really briefly. Because it kind of deals with symbiotes and it kind of... It's I don't know if it's in continuity and same thing with these Guardian episodes. I don't know fully if they're in continuity. I feel like they are. I think all these universes kind of connect. And I think the reason why they're doing that is so that way when we get venomized versions of some characters coming up in season three, it kind of ties into these other cartoons too because they were kind of set up in them as well. So we're going to start with the Avengers episode because there's not much to talk about here. It was season four, episode 20. It was called The Immortal Weapon. And it's a neat concept, this episode. It's basically... Um, you know, the Beyonder has created Battle World, so he's taken parts from a bunch of different worlds and made one Earth. So every zone is kind of like its own territory with different things in it, different, you know, worlds happening and different events. And it's kind of like the comic books did for a while there. They did a Battle World book a few years ago. So that's kind of what this is. And so what it, what's happening is that they go to this one world. It's a, a Black Panther and Falcon, and the two of them go into this like uh, Kun Lun realm, where basically Kun Lun still exists, and Iron Fist is there, and he's protecting uh, something that he can't speak. He's not allowed to speak what he's uh, you know uh, about what he's protecting because there's a curse on him. So he's trying to warn Black Panther. He's trying to warn Falcon, like please don't go in there. Please don't take the Heimdall sword. Uh, and you know, and Falcon and you know Black Panther are like we need the Heimdall sword so we can you know use it to open up the Bifrost and maybe send this all back home and fix Battle World in return all of its worlds back to where they belong and he's like no you can't if you take that sword something bad's going to happen uh, but then he can't speak further than that so they they're like screw you man we need this to save the the universe so black panther's fighting uh, iron fist which was some cool cool fighting for sure but then uh, falcon goes in takes the sword out and you find out that the sword was pierced through a stone and the stone was actually a tombstone uh you know or like a, a grave essentially like a big casket made of stone and inside on the other side of the stone where the sword was in was dracula the sword was piercing his heart keeping him uh dormant now that he's free he comes out and uh and he's you know ready to attack the heroes so they're like okay this sucks now he's raising his army of the undead and they're going to take over kun lun and now we you know we've done this like you, you know you falcon caused this and he's like hey man like stop treating me like a kid i'm sorry i, I messed up but but I can make this right. Let's take down Dracula. And he's like, yeah, it's not going to be that easy. Like Iron Fist, like it took everything in me to do it the first time. And they're like, well, now you got backup. So let's try it. So just when they're about to take down Dracula again, unfortunately, Dracula reveals that he also has some extra help. He can walk in the sunlight now because he is bonded with a symbiote. <laughs> so, uh, so he apparently on battle world, there's a territory on the planet that is full of, uh, you know, symbiotes. And so he wants to lead his army of the undead over there so they can all bond with symbiotes, so they can all walk in the daytime with the protection of the symbiote, and they can just, you know, run across all the battle worlds and dominate everything. So now the stakes are even higher, stakes pun intended. And so uh, so the heroes have to come together. They, they destroy the suit. They, you know, they defeat Dracula and send him back to where he needs to go and, uh, and, and encapsulate him again and, and you know, keep him uh, tombed up. Uh, and Iron Fist is like, yeah, I'm going to stay here and keep an eye on this. And I'm also going to, or no, actually, no, they, they beat Dracula, but he gets away. The symbiote's destroyed, but Dracula gets away and he's still going to go off and try to find the uh, symbiote realm. So Iron Fist is like, I'm going to go after Dracula. You guys go bring the sword back. And maybe if you can undo all this before Dracula gets to where he's going, everything will be okay. So they're like, all right, fine. So that's kind of where the episode ends. It was okay. It wasn't a big fan of this episode, but I kind of like the, the twist that uh, Dracula had a symbiote 
I don't know, it was kind of different and neat, and uh, and that, that he used it to walk in the daytime. I was like, eh, that, that's kind of cool. I can I can see that and, and get behind that. So uh, and it also had lent to some cool fights between like Iron Fist and Falcon and uh, and Iron Fist and Black Panther, which I thought was fun. So the episode wasn't a total bust. I kind of dug it. It's season four of Avengers Assemble, episode twenty, Immortal Weapon. Uh, check it out. It's on the Disney Plus app if you want to watch it. All these shows are that we're going to talk about today are on the Disney Plus app, so you can watch all of them. Uh, but let's dive into the Spider Man episodes because those ones are a lot of fun. So the first spider-man episode episode six of season two is called dead man's party and basically aunt may is going out of town and so miles convinces peter parker to throw a party at his house and he's like no we can't you know every time that happens it's it's a standard trope I, I throw a party, then I get busted for it because it gets out of control and everything. What I loved is they spun that trope on its head. Nobody shows up for the party. Just a couple of uh, Peter's close friends and then like Max Modell shows up and that's it. <laughs> it's like it's like five people at the party because Flash Thompson decided to throw a party the same night and everybody went to that party. So I was like, hey, that's cool. I was expecting the typical house party storyline and it's so funny that they kind of turned that on its head and I was like, all right, that was kind of fun. I wasn't expecting that. So, uh, so Spider-Man then gets attacked by Venom and in the episode they start setting up Eddie Brock and they show that uh, Eddie Brock is working at the Bugle which has now been built up in the first season I think Spider-Man and Venom get in a fight and there's uh, there's uh, the Bugles being built in the background so now Peter is working you know for the Bugle working for J. John Jameson and uh, he meets Eddie Brock there and Eddie Brock is a photographer who's trying to get pictures of Spider-Man, but his pictures aren't as good as Peter's, obviously, because Peter sets up his camera to get dynamic angles while he's swinging around as Spider-Man. So he's got the edge, obviously. So, uh, you know, Brock is like, how do you get these photos? It doesn't make any sense. Well, then J. John Jameson decides to give a job that Eddie was going to do. He says, you know what, Eddie, you're fired from that job. You know, if you can become a better photographer, come back and show me your photos. But for now, Peter did a great job with this last assignment. I'm going to give him your new assignment. So, of course, now Eddie hates Peter because he lost a job to him. So pretty standard stuff there. You know, Eddie seems like an aggressive guy and maybe a, a competitive guy, but, uh, but definitely someone who is not okay with his livelihood being affected. So he didn't seem too, too out of character in this version. And I kind of, I kind of like it so far, you know, and, uh, the, and the Ben Pronsky who's doing the voice does a good job as both Eddie and Venom. So, uh, so now somehow Eddie comes across the suit. Uh, he decides to go like undercover and, and do photographs at, you know, Max's lab uh, where the symbiote's being kept and the symbiote responds to Eddie and then he breaks it out and it bonds with them. So in this episode, Peter's throwing that party and Venom shows up to crash it, but they're fighting upstairs and everyone at the party's like, what's going on up there? And Miles is like trying to cover for Peter because at this point, Miles is also another Spider-Man who was bitten by a spider. So he's just like, oh, you know, Peter's just probably just putting some stuff together for the party um, or doing a science experiment. Let me go tell him to knock that off and come down to the party. So he goes upstairs and sees a hole in the wall and Spider-Man and Venom have left the building and are running down the street. So Miles comes downstairs and says, hey, everybody, you got to leave. You know, Peter is working on a science uh, project and he's sorry, but he's, you know, kind of, uh, you know, knee deep in that or whatever, whatever lie that, you know, he comes up with for him. So everyone's like, fine, whatever, we're leaving. So they leave. So Miles covers pretty good. And then Miles proceeds to go out and help Spider-Man. So in the second episode, episode seven, uh, which is called Venom Returns, that's where Spider-Man and Venom are pretty much going at it full force. And Venom is uh, now knows that it's Peter Parker, that Peter Parker Spider-Man. Uh, he knew he knew that from the get-go because obviously the genetic memories from the symbiote. And I love that they did that. I my that's my favorite thing. I feel like that's a cool thing they could put in these live-action movies where Venom, if he's if, if Eddie Brock's an investigative journalist and he's trying to figure out who Cletus Cassidy is in the next movie, like you know, learn more about his past. He should use the symbiote to bond with somebody to take their memories and, you know, as an, a way to interrogate them or question them if they're not giving up the answers. And uh, and that, I don't know, I like that. It's, it's a neat technique you have at your disposal. So Eddie uses it here and he's like, yeah, I know Peter Parker, Spider-Man. So he basically takes spider uh, kidnaps everyone that's close to Spider-Man, webs them up to the top of the building. J. Jonah Jameson's there too and everyone else is there. Aunt May luckily is still out of town, uh, but like, you know, all of Peter's friends and, and, and potential love interests are all there. Um, and the only ones who aren't there are Miles and Peter. So Venom has Peter in front of them and he unmasks Peter. And everyone's like, oh my God, like, you know, or unmasked Spider-Man and it shows that it's Peter. And everyone's like, what? Like you're Spider-Man? But then Miles shows up wearing a Spider-Man costume, not his Spider-Man costume, but the traditional Spider-Man costume. Uh, and he does that and he's like, yeah, hey, Pete, you know, thanks for taking photos of me and for being a decoy. I know that puts your life in danger, but I, I'm a, kind of a science whiz and I needed to put this weapon together to fight Venom. So he was able to like blow it out or blow it off. And, and everyone kind of was like, oh, okay, 
so Peter's not Spider-Man. <laughs> like it was, a, it was like an instant thing. And, and granted, J. John Jameson was still skeptical. He's like, "Wait, you're a fake?" And you know, and Peter's like, "Yeah, I just take photos of him." But he asked me to put my life on the line, and he goes, and he goes, "Yeah, of course he would, because he's a menace. Of course he would ask a teenager to put his life on the line." So Peter inadvertently kind of covered for himself and kind of derailed uh, J. John Jameson's thought process. And uh, I kind of liked that. I was like, "Yeah, that's pretty funny and kind of clever." Uh, so because uh, because like, how do you get out of that? That was my problem with Spectacular Spider-Man was people thinking Peter was Spider-Man because of Venom, and then. I wasn't convinced on how they no longer thought he was, uh, you know, that Spider-Man, that Peter was Spider-Man. I didn't think they did a good job selling it. This one, I was kind of like, all right, the only one you really had to con convince past that initial thing where Miles showed up in the other costume, you just needed to convince J. John Jameson a little bit, and Peter did a good job at it. So, yeah, I was kind of digging that. And then, of course, they team up together, they use this device, and they take down Venom once again. So, uh, so yeah, another good episode and uh, another... Uh, Another one where I, I, I did question, I'm like watching this and I go, why are people so hard on this show? I mean, I get it. Like I, I'm hard on stuff too. And there are certain things I look for and things I like, and I have my, my standards and everything. So yeah, I mean, uh, but if you are someone who is opposing to the show, let's have a conversation about it down below. And if you're someone who likes the show, let's also have a conversation down below. The final episode of this season that I want to talk about is episode 19, which is called Superior, because for about five or six episodes, they did the Superior Spider-Man storyline where Dr. Octopus, or Otto Octavius, takes over the body of Peter Parker and then transfers Peter's consciousness into like a robot that, uh, you know, that doesn't have a lot, a lot of time to, you know, exist, basically. So Peter's life is on a, a ticking clock. And this is the culmination of that. This is after five episodes now of, of Ock being Spider-Man. And what I like in this version is Ock is a student like Peter. Uh, so when he's fall, he falls in love with Anna Marie, um, you know, it's like, you know, they're about the same age, like, they're, you know, uh, they're, they're all like in the high school years, like late high school years and stuff. Um, and I like him being a young guy. Uh, you know, he's still like a little overweight and everything, but, and he still acts like Auk and he has a certain speech pattern that I love that the actor who plays Spider-Man replicates that speech pattern. So they still have the guy playing Spider-Man do the voice of Spider-Man, but speaking in Doc Ock's speech pattern which uh, the other actor who plays Doc Ock does. So I thought that was a great mimic of that actor. I was like, wow, that's really good. Like that guy is talented. The guy who plays Spider-Man is really talented. So uh, when I was listening to this, I was like, yeah, it's a good episode. And so Spider-Man is, uh, you know, he, or superior Spider-Man is fighting against Venom and throughout this episode. And he's not doing too good. He's losing and he's unable to save Anna Marie. He's unable to save, you know, Flash Thompson and other people, uh, Max Modell and stuff. And, at, and part of him's okay with that because he's just like, whatever, I'm Spider superior Spider-Man. I'm the best there is. But then Peter Parker shows up at a moment where, you know, Doc Ock in his body is about to get killed by Venom. And Peter Parker, as the little robot, shows up and stops Venom uh, putting... Peter's own existence at, you know, at risk because now Peter has like minutes or, you know, so to live and his robot gets mangled by Venom and thrown to the ground. So he doesn't have much longer to live. Like that was his last chance was he was trying to transfer his mind back into his body and then transfer Ock's mind back into the robot and then take that robot and bring it to Ock's body, which was in a coma on the other side of town. So Peter wanted to save Ock still, even though Ock was willing to kind of kill Peter uh, in a way. And so this was really well done. I mean, for considering they wrap they wrapped it up in like five episodes, but I still thought it was fun because they did an episode where you know he first becomes Superior Spider Man and he fights against some of his other Avenger people, and, you know, and friends and other teenage superheroes and stuff like Miss Marvel. And I kind of dug it. I was like, you know, this is not a bad interpretation of that really you know extended arc that Dan Slott did. I thought that was pretty good and pretty well done. So at the end, when uh, you know Ock realizes he can't defeat Venom. He goes over and willingly puts his mind into the robot and extracts Peter Parker's back into Peter's body. And he's like, look, I didn't grow up with an Uncle Ben. You did. And now that I've been you for, you know, a couple weeks now, I've had all your memories flood into my mind. And I know about Uncle Ben. I know about Aunt May. And I know about the lessons that they taught you. And I, and I never had that in my upbringing. And maybe that's why I'm the way I am. He goes, but I do know that I love Anna Marie out there. And she's going to die if we don't save her. And I am convinced I can't save her. So... It, I'm willing to die in this robot to give you the time you need to go save Anna Marie. That was really well done. And so Spider-Man does, he goes out and he defeats Venom. They cap capture it and then, uh, you know, capture the suit again, everything. And then he goes and takes the robot, brings it back to Ock's body uh, with Anna Marie. And they're able to transfer Ock's mind back into his original body. And he wakes up and gets to meet Anna Marie for the first time in person. And it was really touching. Actually, it was really well done. I thought it combined some of the the 
I guess kind of the, the emotions of Spider-Man 2, where Doc Ock wasn't a fully bad guy, uh, but just kind of lost his way. That's how this was. This guy, I felt like this Ock was kind of a bad kid with broken morals, but as he learned the morals, he became a better person and he became a superior him uh, by the end. So uh, I dug it. I thought it was really fun. And uh, I don't know. I see a lot of vitriol still for this show. I know I keep bringing that up, but I'm just surprised because I see that in my comments. I see that on Twitter and stuff. I see people dog on the show and I honestly don't get it. Like this show is pretty decent and I like these three episodes a lot. But again, it's not just about my opinion, it's about yours too. So if you have a different opinion, let me know down below and we'll talk about it. Uh, the last episodes I want to talk about here are the Guardians of the Galaxy episodes. Season 3, episodes 2 and 3. Uh, the first one was called Back in the New York Groove. And the second one is called Drive My Carnage. So this is going to introduce uh, a Carnage type symbiote to this universe. Uh, they, I think they kind of name it Carnage, but, but not really. I think they use the word Carnage, but I don't know if they specifically say this is Carnage. Basically what this is, is Thanos, he has that throne that he sits on. Well, he's been taken down by the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy. They all teamed up to beat Thanos like previous season stuff. And so now Thanos has been locked underground by the Avengers um, underneath New York City in a prison that, uh, that no one can get to. Well, his chair that he had that he was floating on for years, inside of that he kept a special symbiote that he helped create, uh, which is essentially the Carnage symbiote. So he took a regular symbiote and... Uh, converted it, perverted it, however you want to word it, uh, and turned it into this big red uh, and black mass and kept it concealed in that chair. And if anything ever happened to him, like if he was you know, taken into custody or locked down, that suit would find its way to him and bust him out. So that's what happens is the suit comes to Earth and the Guardians follow it there. And then when they get there, they find out it's trying to break out Thanos and Spider-Man shows up. There's some fun banter between them. Spider-Man's meeting them for the first time. They get into a fight, him and you know Peter Quill. And then they both find out each other's names are Peter. It's kind of a Martha moment, uh, which was kind of funny. And uh, and then there was some other good banter and, and stuff in there. But ultimately it's these, you know, Spider-Man teaming up with the Guardians to take down Thanos who is now possessed by a uh, you know a carnage like symbiote and uh, and and Thanos is decimating everywhere. So again, I'm thinking all this stuff is in continuity because it's the same Spider-Man. They mentioned, uh, you know, uh, his, uh, you know, uh, Maxwell Lo uh, Max Lodell and, uh, you know, and uh, Max Lodell and all the people he works for at Horizon at the school. They mentioned that. They go to the school at one point. Spider-Man gets some tech and eventually he uses the symbiote himself, like the one that was captured. He busts open the Venom symbiote and uses it at the end to fight back against, uh, you know, Thanos Carnage. And it's a great fight, actually. I really liked it. And the animation, I thought, for, for Venom looked really great. Because you can tell they're trying to find a style. Like when Spider-Man first got the black suit, it doesn't. it's not the traditional black costume design. Uh, the spider looks a little different. Then the, then the first time you see Venom, he's big, but he's kind of got these fins on him. And there's some differences to him. And then... Now you see Spider-Man wear the suit and he's got the classic spider, the classic white spider on the black costume. And I was like, hey, that's great. And then when he turns into Venom because he's getting enraged and mad and like uh, Thanos puts like a bomb on him that'll like blow up everything in sight. So he's trying to fight back against that and trying to fight for control of the symbiote. And uh, Peter and the symbiote find a way to, to uh, you know, really work together and they overtake Thanos and they help uh, defeat him and stuff. So, and they take his symbiote off him and then Peter's symbiote gets uh, removed too. And... Yeah, pretty neat stuff. And uh, and uh, and remember though the in the superior stuff with uh, Venom and uh, you know that I forgot to mention this in the previous episode where uh, Superior Spider-Man fought Venom. After Venom was defeated by Spider-Man, Peter Parker back in his old body, uh, Eddie Brock was hurt so bad by the device they used that it put him in a coma. So the show ends, or that season ends, or that you know the season of season two of Spider-Man ends. With, P uh, with Eddie Brock in a coma and the suit in there with his, you know, coma body in like a tube and stuff, um, unable to fully separate, you know, at the moment anyway. Uh, so yeah, pretty, pretty dark ending right there, but definitely setting up for what we're going to see in season three of this show. Um, but in this show, the Guardian episodes, they end with, you know, Spider-Man, like I said, using the suit, defeating, um, you know, Thanos. And I think this is probably before the Superior episode. I can't remember like when in the timeline this takes place, but I think the, the most current episode that leads into Maximum Venom is definitely the Superior Spider-Man episode, which is episode 19 of season two. That's the one where Eddie Brock ends in a coma with the suit in him. That's where we're going to pick up with those characters in season three. So uh, definitely make sure you, you know, you stay tuned because we're going to talk about season three very soon. I, I think I might record it today because I've already seen the episode, but maybe I'll wait and watch it one more time uh, before I do it. So I'll figure that out, but I'll try to get that episode up to you guys immediately. And then maybe we'll do a live chat um, sometime this week, either Monday or Tuesday. Uh, maybe we'll do a live chat and we'll discuss 
everything about this cartoon and also, you know, the new Maximum Venom, the first two episodes that are going to air uh, tonight. So please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And then if you have more questions, save them for the live episode and we'll definitely get to them there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you on the Maximum Venom premiere tonight. Peace.